um, from Elizabeth Kelly. She's an international expert. She's executive director of the Electromagnetic Safety Alliance. And uh, she is going to bring us some background and sort of basics about 5G. Good evening, everybody. Thank you for inviting me. Uh, I'm going to start by putting my slides up, and then you won't see as much of me, but you'll see, get more information this way. I'm a, a public, I have a background in public policy and public health. I've been working on this issue for about 25 years. I've been living in Tucson since 2003, and I live in LD9, and appreciate Pam for bringing us together. I'm the executive director of the Electromagnetic Safety Alliance. I direct an international appeal by scientists to the UN, the World Health Organization, and the UN Environmental Program, calling for lower safety thresholds to protect health and to protect nature. Um, I'm also a direct, uh, organizing a major conference that was, was going to be in person, but it has to be virtual, for health practitioners carrying 20 and a half continuing medical education units on prevention, diagnosis, and treatment of EMF-associated illness. The first part of that is a course is a course on January 23rd in three weeks. So check it out, emfconference2021.com. Did we lose her? Uh, and if you want to know more information, please do consider attending our conference, which the first part of it is in October 23rd, 24th. We're featuring 31 speakers from various nations and expert areas of expertise. And 5G, of course, will be one of the main topics of discussion because that is the latest generation of technology known to be causing biological harm. But going back to what's happening in Arizona, in 2017, the Arizona State Legislature adopted a bill that had been written by, the, by ALEC, the uh, uh, American Legislative Exchange Commission, uh, and they adopted language from them, model legislation from ALEC, that uh, preempted uh, the state internally and pre uh, preempted their ability to uh, review and notice neighbors about small, uh, small, small, small cell 5G antennas. This was the impact, and nobody at the time knew what this bill was all about. If we didn't have Pam Hanley voting for it, we wouldn't be here today because it kind of slipped under the radar. And there were other states, 22 other states that followed right after that. But interestingly enough, this bill is parallel to the, the FCC rules that were enacted a year and a half later. So you know the source of the FCC rules. Um, this bill has not been uh, understood because we already are in preempted. Our local government already has their hands tied, as they say, when it comes to uh, the uh, construction modification of cell towers already, but with 5G small cell antennas, the neighbors don't even know they're coming. And once they're there, it's almost impossible to remove them. And the main problem I see with all of this is that we as citizens have a right to know what we're being exposed to. But this invisible environmental toxin is affecting our health and that of nature all around us. And we don't know what the frequencies are, what the science says about those frequencies, we don't understand, and we're, uh, many of us are constantly using wireless devices in our homes. And so the problems that are, are happening with people's health, they're being reported, but they're not necessarily being properly diagnosed and treated. And that's why we're doing the medical conference I'm organizing. But the main thing is people need to understand and abate these exposure conditions. And we need help to monitor these exposure conditions. The, 1996 Federal Telecommunications Act, Section 704, specifically preempted local states and local governments from taking health into account. They use the word environment, but it means health. Just so long as the exposure condition was compliant with the FCC's human exposure guidelines, which are heat-based, not protective, don't correspond to all the science that, that Russ was uh, presenting today, far below the uh, current standards set by FCC and international standard setting organizations. But keep in mind that same section 704 went on to say that they, they, the city will approve a permit just so long as the permit is compliant with the FCC guidelines. Well, who knows? Who's ensuring compliance once it's up? The FCC certainly doesn't do it. Most municipal ordinances do not even include that phrase. 
I myself tried to get such a phrase into Tucson's uh, wireless ordinance and was unable to do so. In fact, I met in Steve Kovacic's office for five months trying to write up a good wireless ordinance and we were hopeful that the city would adopt it, but they did not, they chose not to. I've organized many uh, programs in Arizona. As citizens, we've delivered petitions to the city council, the board of supervisors, and now it, none of that was, uh, it, uh, we weren't listened to, and now 5G is here. Last week, I went to a conference put on by the Arizona Technology Council that was basically made up of people who are expecting to gain significantly financially uh, from the making Arizona a 5G state. And they're starting in, in the Phoenix area. They're trying to develop a 5G region up there, but they have an eye on the whole state. And uh, because of a 5G law, they're going to be moving forward unhindered, un, in, unhindered until that law is repealed. And they see benefits that they talk a lot about, like going green, using clean energy, renewable sources, um, and uh, technology, technology integration, which is 5G and the Internet of Things, where everything is interconnected, interoperable, using the same frequencies with reduced latency and higher speed. And it's a fantastic innovation. It makes a lot of sense to people that are, have a business interest in this because they're going to make a lot of money. And the manufacturers who are going to produce autonomous vehicles in our state will make a lot of money. But there has yet to be a conversation in our state about what this means and what it's taking us to. And so I think there are many questions that need to be addressed. Russ raised several questions. I have questions. And I encourage us to think about starting a conversation in our state, maybe convene a commission to look into this, like they're doing in New Hampshire. New Hampshire has been looking at this. They convened, the state legislature uh, convened or authorized a commission made up of stakeholders all of whom have different perspectives to share. They've been meeting and sharing those perspectives, bringing in their experts, and now they're coming up with a report in November. Um, Rhode Island has just done that. Their report is coming out in November, and Oregon is doing that when it comes to Wi-Fi in classrooms and the effects on children. But there are many other activities statewide to look into 5G, and I think, I think Arizona ought to be part of that conversation. You know, there are many nations in the world, as Russ said, that have set a lower threshold for exposure, taking into account the precautionary principle in the existing science that shows biological harm. And cities in those countries are especially concerned, and they're banning a 5G outright. They're opposing it. So are members of the European Parliament. And Portugal isn't banning it until safety studies are done. This hasn't been done yet. The industry and the FCC admit that. No prior studies were done prior to the deployment of 5G. So if there's a problem, I think we should know now, beforehand, before it gets much worse. Because with antenna densification, 5G is in our community, and it may be coming to your home and your front yard. And we need to be more careful and think about this before it gets any worse. Thanks.